sort of a symposium and getting out there and just reading this information. Here's something. Share the just share. The, I wouldn't. I certainly would not go to my nursing directors or my CNO and say, "Why are you monitoring PVCs?" Because you're not going to do anything about them. That would not be. That would be a career limiting moment. Okay. Um, but I would share this with them because what the group talked about. Once somebody else said, "Well, why aren't you using your, you know full disclosure? We've got beat to beat. We can go through and say." Here's what alarms should be. Here's what's clinically significant. Here's what's not. We can set the alarm. Maybe we shouldn't even have alarms for PVCs anymore. Maybe it should only be these things over here. Well, if we have full disclosure, we have the data um, to make those data-driven clinical decisions. And then we, in the technology world, can support it by helping them establish technology protocols that support that. Does that make sense? Okay. It's sort of like you've got to go all the way around the world to get where you want to be. But somebody once told me for a clinical change to occur, when, like that, that information from 1988, it can easily take 15 years for that to disseminate to a point where people start saying, oh, we need to implement that. Maybe we've hit that tipping point with that particular clinical finding, if you will. So keep that in mind. All right. So and then, you know, we've talked a lot. Yes, sir? Do we take a bio break, if you will? I'm wrapping up. Oh, okay. Great. Thank you. I'm wrapping up. Sorry. Um, advancing technologies, just keep in mind, things are going to continue to change. There's going to be new things come in that you're going to be asked to support in new environments. Keeping in mind that whole continuum of care, you become part of an accountable care thing. You may be supporting equipment in clinics, in physician offices, in people's homes. You're going to have to come take care of stuff in my house. I am going to be a cranky old woman. <laughs> Do you know how to deal with me as a customer? Do you need to, no. I, I, don't know, I don't know how to work this equipment. And as a former clinical engineer, you don't want me messing with this equipment because I'm going to think I know what I'm doing. Okay? So keep that in mind that this technology, the disruptive things are going to continue to come knocking on your door. Which means, now I'm going to skip over this, the uh, partnership for patients. Essentially, that's more keeping the patient at the center, driving for quality, communicating with your C-suite, and remembering, and, and I think Einstein said it best, we can't solve problems by using the same kind of thinking we used when we created them. We got here with the best of intentions. We got to get out of here with the best of intentions as well. But we're going to have to think about things very, very differently. But I would I guess I would ask is that no matter what problems you go after, remember that the reason all of us have jobs is because of the patients. Thank you. Do you want a bio break or questions? <laughs> Let's go for some questions here. Um, <clears throat> I'm going to do something real quick. And we'll get started. Um, Let's ask some questions from the, the field. I think I'm going to actually have to have somebody like Adam. Would you uh, be on the laptop? And we'll field some questions because we have we have some folks from all over, really. But we have a larger group of, of people from Boise that might have some questions. Um, I didn't hear any feedback that, they, that the sound quality was bad, so I think we we got that somewhat hammered out. Um, anybody have any questions for Carol? And can you see if those guys, uh, DC and, and John, would you... Uh, would one of you guys uh, be able to unmute yourselves? Let's see how the sound is then. Yeah, we're unmuted now. You'll just have to let us know if we're causing all sorts of issues. Okay. Um, Sound good. Yeah, if you go to the lower right on there, you it's a PC. Um, can you um, bring the volume up just a little bit maybe so that we can hear any questions in the room? And uh, we'll take a... Uh, We'll give you guys in Boise the first stab. Do you have any questions for Carol? Nobody is jumping up to uh, ask any questions. Maybe you guys Are you just questions? sitting down? I hear you guys had ribs or something up there, so. They're all in a food coma. That's right. <laughs> um, I, I guess I, I have a question. Sure. And that is, uh, how would the average biometech 
be best prepared to prepare for integration with the EMR, EHR, and HIE, and all the acronyms <laughs> that are out there? Well, I think one, learning what all those acronyms are, that has been a huge educational piece for me, um, so that you can understand the conversation. So that's maybe step one. Um, and step two is the pieces of equipment that you're particularly responsible for becoming more familiar with their capabilities or lack of capabilities when it comes to integration, being able to talk to other systems, other devices. So perhaps using, and you guys have the slide set, using that little table that we had there, um, using that as a, a template for collecting your own data, beginning that collection. Um, this is extremely labor intensive, so I don't uh, see the average person collecting all of it by themselves. Um, there is a handful of there is a handful of people in the world that have collected sig significant amounts of this data. But if you focus on a on a piece, I think that's what the individual can do, and then have that sort of in the ready to say it does or it doesn't or it kind of will. Hey, uh, I don't want to ask all the questions, Corey. Did you differentiate between an EMR and an EHR? Sure, EMR is one. Hospital. What, well, let's say one organization, okay? So if you work for a health system that has three hospitals, those three hospitals have the same EMR, okay? But if you have relationships with physicians who have their own physician EMR, and maybe uh, a standalone surgery center that has their own, and that all feeds up into an EHR that's multiple organizations or multiple EMRs that, that feed up into that. Does that make sense? Hierarchy. Yes. 